Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Test of Cakes. It's Jen and I'm gonna show you how to make the fish from the cat in the hat. Cat in the Hat is another one of my classic children's literature books that I was making the giant cake out of. And I'm gonna show you how I made him out of gum paste. Okay, I started with orange as you can see. Roll it out so you get a big ball on one end and very much taper it toward the other end. And then I cut an angle off at the bottom, you see that? This little slit I just put right there is gonna be his mouth. He has too big of a mouth, so I cut off the edge and I'm just pinching and shaping it a little bit to make his mouth a little bit more small and underneath the top part of his head. Like the, if you look up pictures of him when he's hanging out his bowl, you're gonna see that his head is kind of long and, and humped over on the end and his bottom lip is pretty small and kind of tucked under his body. You know, almost like a puppet if you can imagine that. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm pressing underneath his lip with the tool there just to make a divot to really separate his out his lip out and make him have a lovely little mouth. <laughs> I'm using the bowl tool right there in order to lift and separate up uh, eye socket. I'm going to do it on each side. I'm trying to do it carefully so I don't make the uh, gum paste around the outside rough or frayed or anything like that. So just nice and gentle. Lift it up. His eyes are on either side of his head and they're a decent size but they're not enormous. So don't go too big with it there. And just cleaning up the inside of his mouth a little bit. And yeah, there you go. You got a nice little foundation to your fish. See, he looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to use the back of the knife around behind each eye to make a groove because in the pictures he has a lot of wrinkles and lumps and grooves and everything. Made a few across the back of his head in order to make it look more wrinkled. I trimmed off a little bit more just because I felt like it needed it. And then I'm shoving him on top of a lollipop stick. I'm shoving him up kind of at an angle so when he sits on the bowl, it'll just fit right into it. And I'm sticking him in a block of styrofoam for now so that he can uh, get hard and I can add his fins. This piece that I'm cutting out right now is going to be the fin on his back. It is forked and it's kind of long. It's not crazy, but it does have the two pieces to it. You gotta trim it off at an angle like that so it lays against his back. And then you're gonna add a little water to it to make it stick and press it right on in there. It's gonna go behind his wrinkles there that I gave him on his back. And his fins are supposed to kind of curl upward and out. So I'm using little pieces of um, paper towel to lift the tips of his fins so that they do lift up and out. And when they harden, they'll stay that way. Now I'm gonna fill in his eyeballs, obviously with white. Just put a big old ball in there. And you see it isn't deep enough. If you have that problem, you can typically add a little more right on top. You don't have to dig the whole thing out and try to guess again. So you just press it in there. I'm using my rounding tool to circle it off and press it off. And same thing on the other side. Just press in your wad, rub it in, circle it out, and you're good. This is gonna be his pupil. Um, Dr. Seuss's characters typically don't have dots for eyes. They usually have like a letter V or a U. So I just rolled out a little piece of black, made it into kind of a V shape, and I'm just pressing it down into his eye. Same thing on the other side. I'll take some black, make it into a letter V, press it on down into his eye. Try not to press it out too much. I think this was his way of making highlights without having to go through effort when he would draw, but I don't know. I'm using a black edible food coloring marker in order to highlight the lines that I've made and to give him a couple of little gills. I'm going to add some details to the fin. You can see just putting some lines in and a little bit of shading, that kind of thing. I'm going to add more later on. That was hard to see, but I just covered in the rest of the one on his backs. The ones on his back, excuse me. Okay, I'm making his eyebrows now. He's got very big, almost like grandpa kind of crazy flyaway eyebrows. So I rolled out the gum paste as you saw there, long and thin, tapered on each end kinda. And then using a little water, I'm placing it inside of the arches that I made for his eyebrows. And I'm doing it on each side, of course, just because it's better that way. So now he's got some really big eyebrows. And I don't know why he has eyebrows, but he does. So he has them here too. Okay. Back to his fin, adding a little more detail. Now that it's hardened up, it was a little soft before. It's a little bit easier to do. I just outlined the fin a little bit, you saw. Putting a little line underneath his eyes. And now I'm gonna show you how I did the fish bowl. I'm rolling out just some white fondant right now. And you see the styrofoam bowl? I just ordered a ball, six inch ball, this one was. 
trimmed off a little on the back, a lot on the top, and rolled my gum paste out and laid it over it. As you can see, I'm covering it pretty much like I would a cake. You just smooth it out, rub it down, smooth it out. The small flat part that you can see at the top there is going to be the base of the bowl. That's what's going to sit on the cake. And the bottom part is going to be the larger area, and that's where our fish is going to go. So that's why when I'm laying this gum paste over it, I'm doing it so that the opening, you know, the large part of the bowl is going to be where the font or the gum paste finishes. So it's not going to get covered by the white right now, but we'll take care of it. So don't worry. I'm using my hands to smooth it down. I'm using a pizza cutter that I have in order to trim off the extra just because it's a lot cheaper than those fancy fondant cutters. You see I turn it over and you have little tags sticking out so I'm trimming it off with some scissors. I'm using my paddle there to smooth it off and more, more trimming because as you smooth it you're going to get a little bit more sticking out the top which is fine. You want that to happen. It's better to have too much and trim away than not enough and be stuck doing it over again because trust me I know. This blue is going to cover up that opening there in the middle of our styrofoam. I'm just trimming out a circle out of blue. We're using my knife just to see what, how it'll fit and it obviously doesn't so I just keep trimming away at it until it did. Um, I am sure you could do this out of cake if you wanted to instead of this was a topper so I was making it out of styrofoam to try to keep it as light as possible because the cake you can see some of it behind it was enormous and they only needed it for 45 people but wanted all this jumbo cake so they got a lot of extra cake and to make my life easier I made the bowl with styrofoam instead if you did make it out of cake I would recommend using like a really firm ganache in order to hold its shape as much as possible but this is what I did anyway so you saw I rolled out a big old log of gum paste there trimmed it so it fit around the ring and now I've got the collar of my bowl okay and that little rough edge that was between the blue and the white it was not an issue because we covered it up so it's it's all good you just use water to connect it all I use lollipop stick to make a hole in my styrofoam and once you have a good pilot hole there your fish should just sit right into it and he's looking really cool already he was fun to make this blue that I'm rolling out is just gonna be drops of water kind of splashing over the side of his bowl I'm using my little veining tool there to just press it down and make sure it's tucked into the edge of the of the collar of the bowl there so there's no problem there and now I'm just making some more. You roll it out between your fingers. You only roll one end so that it's nice and round on fat on one end and skinny on the other. And make as many as you want. Make them stick up how you want. You know, do whatever you want. He got splashed around a lot in the book. So you really can't go wrong. And that seam I had on the other side where the collar of his bowl met, I'm going to end up covering that with a piece of gum paste too. So it really works out. See, there I am. I'm covering it right now. And now you can't even see that it's there. And he looks cool, right? Okay, we're not done yet though. We're gonna give him fins now. I'm just taking some kind of thick, kind of thin gum paste. You don't want it too thin. I had to deliver this cake, so I had to make it a little thicker so it would travel safely. And you, you're gonna make kind of like a broom shape out of it. And you're gonna have it a little thinner at the top and then flared out pretty wide at the bottom. I'm using the circle cutter to make him have three little points in his fin and kind of taper in the, the middle area there, almost like he has a, a skinny wrist and then it goes wider again. And once you get a good fin, good size, you measure it up to his body like you saw me do, lay it on the gum paste and cut another one so that they're the same size. Nice little easy sneaky treat there. So using my circle cutter again, I'm making it work so that it's all the same and there's no problems with it. And when you're ready to it, attach it, just stick it on. If you need a little ball of gum paste on the back to make it stick better, do that. You know, he's a little loose, but it shouldn't matter. And yeah, he's got his fins now. And we are just going to finish him up. I'm going to outline his fin a bit, give him some details, shade in under his belly. Because if you look at pictures of him, there, he has a lot of shading that is done with a pen or whatever he drew with. So I'm just, again, outlining the fin a little bit, give a little detail, shade under his belly, under his little fishy armpit. And then I'm going to start making some lines on his bowl. I don't know why, but Dr. Seuss was all about adding lines to things. I Again, I guess for shading or detail, I don't know, but that's the look we're going for. So 
just start adding lines. You're going to add a few long ones. If you add some smaller ones, stack them up like one, two, three on top of each other. And my bowl can go all the way around. I added a little bit of detail on some of the drops of water. Just a little bit here and there. And you've got yourself a really cool cake topper of Dr. Seuss's cat in the hat fish in his bowl. And hopefully you like this video. Please like and subscribe. Check out my others. I got a lot more of the children's classic literature coming for this big cake I made. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.